Good evening. Welcome to WSBI, your resource for success podcast program, where you get to meet inspiring women-owned businesses from across the country. And now, for your host, Kimberly McElmore. All right, good evening and welcome to WSBI, your resource for success podcast program, where you get to meet inspiring entrepreneurs and women-owned businesses from across the country. I am your host, Kimberly McLemore. Tonight is a special edition show. With us, we have Richmond Punch, violinist extraordinaire. Richmond is a violin virtuoso who delivers a riveting, dynamic, explosive, and powerful performance. Dallas's own. He graduated from Booker T. Washington High School and the Juilliard School of Music, earning his master's degree from Yale University. His business specializes in live violin music for all such as corporate events, concerts, festivals, weddings, and worship. Mr. Punch recently performed in Havana, Cancun, Los Angeles, and Cabo San Lucas, has delighted and dazzled audiences from Atlanta to Anchorage, Las Vegas to New York, and everywhere in between. So without further ado, please help me welcome to my platform, Mr. Richmond Punch. Hey, Richmond, how are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you so much, Kimberly, for having me. Well, it is my pleasure, and I've been excited. You know, most people don't know that we're, you know, in the background, we talk before the show, so we've been going at it, and I've just been really, really excited to have him. It's been more than a year that I think we've been trying to touch bases, and now that you're here, I'm looking forward to um, hearing your story, and I'm sure my listeners are as well, and then at the end, we're going to have a treat for everybody, so... Why don't we just get this thing rock and rolling? So, Richmond, why don't you tell the listeners just a little bit more about who Richmond Punch is? Yes, ma'am. Uh, just yesterday, actually, I had a very good conversation with a friend to update my mission um, so that uh, I've heard that one of the most important things is to have a mission so I can tell you an updated version very much so of who I am. I'm a, I'm a product of public schools in Dallas, Texas. And I started the violin when I was five years old um, and was able to go to art and arts high school, which is called Booker T. Washington High School for the Performing and Visual Arts. Mm -hmm. Uh, Through training during school on the weekends and during the summer, basically year round, I uh, started with practice and eventually got scholarships, uh, which allowed me for more skills, which allow for private lessons. And I was able to get into the arts high school and eventually to Juilliard uh, as my undergraduate and Yale University was my graduate school and for a master's of music. Wow. So you have been playing since you were five, but what really inspired you? I mean, at five years old to know that that's what you wanted to do. It, it was the the sound of the instrument was really appealing um, in terms of uh, the, the school sat us down in a concert. And, mm-hmm. and, and, you know, for a public school to do that, it was really quite a feat. And they were basically they gave us the opportunity to choose uh, the instrument based mm-hmm. on based on the sound. Mm-hmm. Wow. And that is interesting because normally at that young age, it's usually you know, the parents, you know, p- kind of pushing the kids into, you know, maybe playing music and doing something or either singing and so forth. So to hear that type of a program, that is definitely unheard of in, in most communities. And for you to have a distinctive ear, that to me is very interesting that the sound is what brought you to that. So you've been playing since five and obviously you've grown and done so many things in between that. But let's talk about some of the challenges that you may have had along the way and why you decided to stick with it? Sure. Uh, along the way, there was, of course, the challenge of growing up in a single-parent home. Um, there were there was the challenge of, you know, really being able to learn. I, there were many times when I picked up the instrument and I didn't make, you know, a pleasant sound. Uh, I didn't know whether it would really you know, work for me in a career. There was, there was definitely that point uh, because my initially I wanted to study, I thought about studying engineering and music uh, because, you know, of what would, what would my life look like in terms of a career? And, uh, but I was in New York city 
while I during part of that time while I was figuring that out. So it was a, a town that really wel- welcomed the arts, and 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 the uh, the level of the arts was so high that I had no you know uh, no reservations you know but to believe you know the greatest thing the greatest achievement is possible. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, because I, you know, when I'm hearing you tell your story and then after even reviewing everything, that I don't know too many people have gone to Juilliard School of Music. So talk about that experience. It had to be a very powerful, emotional time for you to be able to be a part of Juilliard. Yes, indeed. Uh, Juilliard in New York City uh, really helped change my career. The experiences I had there, one, uh, one in particular, uh, comes from my own roommate in college who was who studied with Winter Marsalis mm-hmm. and and my my after school discoveries of of jazz and my hearing jazz also throughout my time at Juilliard uh, is one of the things that really helped shape me shape who I am. Uh, I also was able to experience my first entrepreneurship basically, and it was actually performing in, in the subways. Performing mm-hmm. in the subways, and there, you know, there were gigs as well in New York City. But performing in the subways, I I would go to the subway like it was a job, mm-hmm. and 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 have routine, and I would go after school, and uh, and I would play, and it was it was great. I learned about how to run a business, you know, in some in some some ways that that carried me to to where I am now. Right. And it's amazing how you learned it from being in the subway. And, then, and so talk about those steps of running that type of a business, because you're in a completely different industry than most people that I have ever spoken to or actually have even interviewed on this show. As a matter of fact, when we were talking earlier, I told you that you were actually my very first artist and musician on the show. And so what a lot of people don't understand is that no matter what business we're in, business is business. And, and even though you have an expertise in your field, talk about what it means to be in this type of industry. Yes. Well, you know, music, the there there's being an entertainer. There's kind of two major things to look at being an entertainer, which is some great and honored to say that I'm able to do that. And then there's the thing that is the sustaining element or the longevity. And so a lot of times that is achieved by just like in business by, by sales uh, by by sales, what, what we call, you know, uh, Rick Ross, I heard you once per, refer to it as sales in my sleep. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're, your music, your music, even a musician, your music can, your product can sell 24 hours a day. And then there's, um, there's, uh, um, you, you know, what products you create besides CDs, you know, T-shirts, things like that. Mm-hmm. And there's also... Um, Oh, I'm trying to think of uh, entre- oh, entrepreneurship. There's there's speaking. There's guest appearances at colleges, universities, and there is what I just did the, yesterday. It took me about one or two weeks, but I signed up for CJ for affiliate marketing, so that um, so that on my website I can have other advertisers like Samsung, mm-hmm. uh, different companies like that. You know, pay me for place within my website or my social or any of, you know, my networks that, that can sell. So, um, you know, I feel, I feel like a lot more than a musician. Okay. So, but in your business now, you're, are you, you're obviously a solo, solo artist and so forth, but do you have any management that helps you, you know, with the, your gigs and, you know, and, and signing you up and getting you some of those additional speaking engagements and so forth? Yes. Well, a lot of my, career, my business has been self-run. I I figured out these things myself, Mm -hmm. um, self-taught in those elements, but I did sign with management, which I do have, uh, before I, before I moved to, uh, to Atlanta, which was March 1st, which was just a couple of weeks before COVID hit. Right. Right. I I signed to a manager then, Mm -hmm. although, you know, and, the only thing there is it, it's not it wasn't the easiest time to sign with the manager and then you know expect a tour and then and then get a covid cancellation you know so but um but but I'm really excited with everything that's going on and my business has continued to grow 
Yeah, you're right. And and being that, you know, we've had this pandemic going on. So talk about how you have to be versatile and what you've been doing because, you know, you weren't able to go out and do the tour. Um, you know, give some insight on how that was working for you. Sure. Well, one of the things, there are two different things I came up with. First, I, I like everyone else, I watched the news when COVID arrived, okay, when the shutdowns arrived. So I was watching the news and social media very closely because I want to know what are the best in the industry. They're, they're not sleeping on, on success, okay? They're, mm-hmm. they're doing something. I wanted to see what they were doing. And I, so I noticed DJ D. Nice, he came out with a club quarantine. And, and he went viral for DJing, uh, which was very, very early on during the, during the COVID. That was that was occurring. And then I would look at artists like um, Tony Terry it, as well. He he went out with his mask and actually went. He was like I think he was working out in a park and and randomly ran into a couple uh, that was getting married. And mm-hmm. and stopped and asked them if he could bless their wedding and and then ran somewhere to get his speaker and came back and performed on the spot <laughs> wow. for, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so there's so many things to learn and discover, uh, you know, like that, like you wouldn't imagine that first, first of all, you know, and Tony Terry, you know, a, a lister, you know, right. And you, exactly. you know, and I'm trying to figure out, you know, where's my creativity, a, you know, rise. I'm a violinist. I, I, I like to street perform. The audience is not everywhere, but a lot of people were in the parks. So let me tell you what I, what, what I started. I started, um, I, I did do public performances. Remember in Italy when they started applauding, mm-hmm. uh, first responders. Yes. So, yeah, so that was the first thing. So I did one of those appearances. I performed from my balcony, uh, uh, classical music, different songs like that, different styles. That was the first thing I did. And then I went into downtown or midtown Atlanta and performed a concert like that where they had the applause at 9 p.m. And so that was that was a great success. And and it was also I was able to be safe while right. doing it. And right. then and then Black Lives Matter c- came at a heightened level because of the shootings and, and killings of of black people, unarmed people, mm-hmm. all kinds of, you know, like that. And, and so I'm, I, I was like, I, I shifted that energy. You have to be able to shift. I feel a lot of times in success. So I shifted to, to the cause of what of now my, my current mission, which is strings for justice. Mm-hmm. And so I, uh, just yesterday, actually, I, I, uh, originally, I had a, a hashtag, and I used a hashtag for a lot of this. That was called King of Quarantine Strings, and the new one is called Strings for Justice because I went out during – oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. Finish your thought. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So I went out during – after Ahmaud Arbery was, was shot, shot and killed and George Floyd, and then I went to the Wendy's after Rashard Brooks, and then – and and I was I was doing strings for justice without really without really having the mission mm-hmm. um, at that point and and this and it goes way back I've been doing that since even before Botham John um, and during Botham John time Botham John was shot and killed in Dallas mm-hmm. um, and uh, so I've been doing that a long time and so I realized that's strings for justice so uh, anyway I got to. Uh, I, it accumulated in a viral performance that I did for a race Char Brooks viewing. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. So, um, you know, it, it, I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. Did you have something else you wanted to say? No, go ahead. Go ahead. And I guess what I'm thinking is that, you know, being that we are definitely still in a pandemic that people have definitely had to be versatile. Like you said, you have to think outside the box and not do the norm. But even when we don't think it's the norm, like you said, you've been doing this for years and not really knowing or calling it what it really was. And now that you have changed those dynamics and I've also have seen you do some virtual as well. So you still continue to do that, correct? Yes. Yes. My uh, King of Quarantine Strings was born from my very much at home 
concerts. You know, uh, mm-hmm. 80% of things are at home. I have a backdrop, you know, simple, whatever I could do, figure out Zoom and Restream and figure out sound systems. And, right. You know, <laughs> and... Uh, and, and 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 make it work and uh sometimes even record the performances because mm-hmm. of the, because they can be shown in video and, and of course uh probably 80 90% live and you know so uh matter of fact I just did music right now a, a one and a half hour performance a linked linked video mm-hmm. for for a funeral oh wow for for a funeral that will be on Saturday, and mm-hmm. so I just I sometimes when you want the your music and heighten, you know I didn't want to perform it live because of, you know I want the quality to be at its its peak, you know mm-hmm. for a for the feeling of the service. So I you know I so I put on my best suit and I played all the way through so that it still everything still feels like it's live. <laughs> Right. But, you know, but that and that's the key, though, is that, you know, we because we have to have this flexibility and we have to use the technology that we need to use today. It's really teaching people to understand that you don't always have to be in the same room in order to be successful at what you're doing. And you're proving that. And you've like I said you're learning that, you know, all the different steps that you've had to take in order to stay out there, because obviously being um, a musician and an artist, you can't stop just because something has made the world stop to some degree. You have to continually be out there so people can remember your name and, and what you do um, as an artist and you need to stay relevant, you know, and um, that I think that's important. So talk about some of the different type of music that you do. I, I know that you have um, CDs and, and, and music out there, but tell the listeners what the type of music you actually play. Yes. Yeah, so I'm probably classified as a jazz violinist, Mm-hmm. But what what I do is a little bit more of the definition of jazz, which is improvisation in music, right? That's actually more of my actual style. But I can't say to people I'm an improviser or I play every style in the world. They, they will still come back and ask you, you know, because everybody needs to have a specificity. They'll ask you, what do you do? Mm-hmm. So jazz is what I it's, tell you know is that is that term i use but i mean i'm playing i'm playing in one week i'm playing latin jazz uh uh, latin jazz country pop rock hip-hop um i'm playing world music i'm playing classical uh you know just about every week i'm playing all those styles wow well, you definitely I've heard I've definitely heard some of your music and I just love the tone and I and I know when we were trying to reach out to each other latter part of last year I was like I got to have this man on my show because it's I want people to see that there is to business there's more than just um it's not just about the singing it's not about just sitting behind the desk there's so much more involved in life and what your capabilities are and you have definitely taken the proper steps you know you've gone through all these amazing schools of music and then here you had your degrees in Yale and so forth so you're your music is not just about playing by ear and about just being on the streets. You have truly in, um, involved and in, in put in the time and the effort that you need to have in order to be the, the violinist that you are. So if you um, had the opportunity to teach or, or do you have any programs where you're actually teaching other young people about what it means to be a violinist? Yes. Yeah, so one of the things I've been doing is, first of all, is virtual lessons. Mm-hmm. And uh, for for a while, for sure, during the quarantine, especially, I had you know uh, some virtual students. Um, to, you know, I, and I'm still always looking for additional students. The virtual lessons have been a great success. Like the fact that you can teach someone without being there to hold and adjust and and to you know and hands on mm-hmm. you know things you don't need those things you can, if you can convey the message and the teachings in in video uh it's really it's really effective so um i've been doing those lessons and i have recordings like from my zoom lessons um so i you know using zoom or skype to do those those lessons and but also uh through strings of strings for justice i am foreseeing what I've foreseen for a long time now, starting a nonprofit uh, under it for that, Strings for Justice. So it would bring more music 
to mm-hmm. to youth, youth and uh, to adults, but it would also serve the cause that 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 builds equality and humanity. And mm-hmm. so, you know, that could that could pertain, of course, heavily to Black Lives Matter, but just causes it. But it would also pertain to mental health, uh, mental health, which is, or, 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 you know, are all the parts of the things that are discussed um, as it pertains to the to the to the to the treatment of citizens right, <laughs> right. involving the police, involving the police. So, mm-hmm. yeah, so I um I really want to play strings, st- play strings of justice, but also serve, uh, serve, serve that fight. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and the reality is, you know, music is the healer for everything that we do. Um, it brings people together as well, like you said, and, and fight the causes that we're fighting for. And, you know, I think what you're doing and what you've implemented has been amazing. And it's and I'm glad that you're out there um, making sure that people understand that how this affects you and how it can affect other people, but you're doing it in a different way, in a different format. So talk a little bit, though, about some of your um, amazing concerts and locations and people you've been around and some of the stars you have also served and have done music for. Yes. So going back, I would say to my college time was some of my first major performances or after college, um, being able to to back uh, Kenny G and Dinah Ross, mm-hmm. um, those are some of the those early on professional experiences that I had in uh, backing them in in ensemble, um, and I also was able to play for celebrities like Danny Glover, um, then and then you know people like oh, Amari Hardwick, Viola Davis. Uh, I did. I did Kirk Franklin's tenth wedding anniversary. Oh wow! Um, was 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 early on. That would that would be some some ways back, probably mm-hmm. closer to during college. Mm-hmm. And um, I um, just a lot of collaborations. I remember backing Donnie McClurkin on his live album in in Virginia Beach. It's that's the album that was really, really highly received called Psalms, Hymns and Spiritual Songs. Mm-hmm. He has he has total praise on it and you know, all those songs are on it. and I was just I've had some some great experiences but but the the ones I'm having now like uh, are just they're just amazing, you know, be uh when as soon as I arrived at Atlanta pre COVID, mm-hmm. you know, I had less than two weeks and I met members of one twelve and oh, wow. and uh running Yes, and uh, you know Jay Jay Holiday and Little Zane and uh, and Q Parker, you know, is actually one of my friends, and then um and like Ronnie DeVoe uh, from Belle Viv and DeVoe, mm-hmm. and and I'm I just feel like I'm I'm in the most amazing place. You absolutely are. You're definitely soaring some more. <laughs> you've been you've been spreading your wings out for years, but now you are absolutely taking those next those big leaps and more soaring and and people being able to be around more people who are in the industry. And I think that's amazing. And then I applaud you for that. And congratulations. Cause I, you sound very excited about it and you should be, <laughs> you absolutely should be. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank yes. you. Absolutely. So I always ask this question with all my guests and the number one question I ask is what would you do and what would you tell a person who would be interested in getting into this type of business or this industry? What would the words of encouragement be that you would provide them? I would say to anybody, come in with the maximum vision and maximum creativity. That's the first thing I would say, because if you come in with any kind of a limitation, you know, you're going to stop yourself short of your goals, of your, of the future that you see. So I, uh, because I'm always a visionary, my mom raised me to be a visionary. You know, my, my wife and I, we, we're always, we're always visionaries, always looking for the, the next level and how can we reach more people? But that, so that's, would be the first thing. And then to, um, to study, you know, nowadays you have, you know, you can go to jam sessions. I've gone to thousands and thousands of jam sessions. Matter of mm-hmm. fact, I just went to one, I, I want to say even two weeks ago. 
mm-hmm. to here, here in Atlanta because because it doesn't stop. You know, um, jam sessions are real. Uh, there's we have these things called the master classes where you can be in the presence of, a, you know, like a well, Winter Marcellus or in one case I was in in presence of Regina Carter. She mm-hmm. gave a jazz master class, uh, jazz violinist Regina Carter at Juilliard um, during my learning period and uh also um find you know scholarships come in handy uh um also um also investing in yourself right. but just just i guess i'm talking to both kids and adults but right just mm-hmm. this just going for it you know Right. But the key is, is that, you know, you're, you're making them, what I like what you said earlier is the fact that people have to have a vision and understand what they're doing and why they're doing it. And then there's all those other pieces that come with it because, you know, like I said, you, you want to stay out there, you want to stay relevant, you want to learn and is having several mentors in that type of business is that I would believe is very necessary because you're constantly learning and you're always going to change in this type of industry. So, uh, you know, your advice I think is, is very important that people understand, but I definitely think it's important that, you know, obviously you're younger and you're really interested that you take those steps to staying in school and, and learning and doing and reading music and understanding all the pieces that come with it. And it's not just about playing and hanging out. It's really, truly um, embracing it the way that you've embraced it so that you can continue to flourish all through your life and continue to do the work that you're doing. Cause I know when you talked a little earlier, you talked about being an engineer as well. And so when you looked at being an engineer, that was that going to be your back, your drawback if you decided not to continue with uh, being a violinist? Yes, it was, it was definitely going to be uh, going to be the fallback. And I was, I'd already figured out the schools, that were the top in both music and engineering. Mm-hmm. And I, I had it mapped out where whether plan A happened, plan B happened, that I would figure it out, you know. Wow. Well, we're glad that you decided to go with plan A and not plan B. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, thank you. We definitely appreciate that. So, Richmond, why don't you tell the listeners about um, what events you may have coming up or any other programs that you have that you're working on? Sure. Yes. So uh, the newest thing is let's talk about music uh, out there worldwide. I have the, a new EP that I released since the quarantine called Him, Hymns for Botham, which features the title song Hymn for Botham, written for Botham John, killed by police officer Amber Geiger in Dallas. Um, so there's that material. There's uh, going back. There's a hip hop CD, 2019 uh, CD called Back That Violin Up. Um, this is more hip hop jazz. But you you're about you're going to be playing a song from 2017, I believe 17 CD called Finally. And uh, latest performances, performance wise, I've just got. Uh, a uh, well, you'll see me various places in Atlanta, but I just got a weekly opportunity at Sage Restaurant, uh, which is here on the north side of of Atlanta, and it's a great restaurant. And 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 you know, as a musician, you always you again back to the vision. You always envision the the largest thing, so you ideally you want to be booked on the the biggest day. And mm-hmm. so I actually got, I got Saturdays. Okay. So I'll be playing um, every Saturday. Well, congratulations. I'm sure that they're excited about having you coming on board. <laughs> so that's great. Yes, indeed. Well, you definitely have a lot of things going on, but if somebody would like to reach out to you or be able to purchase your CDs, could you give them that information? Why don't you tell our listeners how to find you? Sure. Uh, you can visit richmondpunch.net. You can add, you can add Violin Richmond on Instagram or Twitter. Uh, Richmond Punch is also on LinkedIn. And uh, the, the CDs, a lot of the merchandise is available at richmondpunch.net forward slash merch. All right. Well, you guys heard it live from Richmond Punch. I really appreciate you coming on this evening and spending some time with me because, um, <clears throat> excuse me, like I said, it's been exciting. I've been wanting to have you on the show. And again, for those who don't know, this is my first 
uh, artists on board here this evening. So it's a, as a special edition show, I'm just so glad that Richmond had the time because, you know, being I know he's very busy, whether we have the pandemic or not. So, again, sir, thank you so much for coming on and spending your time with us this evening. Thank you so much. And I look forward to more. And I want to thank the your your resource for success podcast and Kimberly McLemore for doing this. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. And thank you. And for everyone this evening, um, before we end, I'm definitely going to be playing like um, Richmond said, we're going to hear his song called finally, but I'm going to use that as the um, outro for this evening instead of doing my normal ending of the show. But I also want to remind everybody that we are here every Thursday evening at 7 p.m. We are on 12 different platforms. So there's no reason that you cannot hear this show, whether you heard it tonight or you want to do the replay tomorrow or any other day. If you would like to be a special guest on this show, all you need to do is reach out to me um, by sending an email to Kimberly WSBILC at gmail.com. Or you can also go on to my Facebook page at www www.wsbilc.com and request to be on the show. We are filling slots for 2021. There is nothing available for this year. I'm already halfway through next year. So please, if you're truly interested and you want to be a part, please make sure that you reach out to me sooner than later. And also, we would love to have your donations to the show. All donations um, go for the support of the show and the program, as well as our um, purple and pink Uh, throwback fundraiser that we have every year which supports breast cancer awareness and domestic violence awareness and as I always remind people for those who don't know I am a domestic violence survivor so it's very important to me that um, we um, help those people within the community who are helping those families and those mothers and children and fathers that need assistance from um, being abused and of course the continuous research of breast cancer awareness so 50% of the our proceeds will go to a breast cancer awareness organization as well as going the 50% will go to domestic violence and we collaborate every year with um, Move With Tea which is um, a gentleman named Tarek uh, Coles who is also a part of this um, event with me uh, we've collaborated for the last several years and we we're excited that we will be having another um, event coming up here in the next couple months but please go to um, the uh, www.wsbilc.com and donate to our cause um, so that we can make sure that we can like to continue to support our amazing business owners as well as support our awareness organizations. So again, I thank you all for listening to the show this evening. And like I said, I'm going to give you a special treat and listen to this music from Richmond Punch called Finally. Good night, everyone.